So reports have surfaced that the Hawks and Spurs discussed a trade before the trade deadline that would have sent Trey Young to the Spurs. Now, it obviously, it didn't happen, but given the position the Hawks are in, I think it's time to consider a rebuild. Yeah, it really is. And mainly on the Spurs side, I would have loved to see that happen. But even from the Hawks perspective, like you made the conference finals a few years ago now, you're not going anywhere. I think it's just time. It's time to go! <laughs> Before we start talking about the Hawks, if you haven't already, make sure you leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So let's look at Trey's time with the Atlanta Hawks, and we gotta go back to the 2018 NBA draft where the Hawks very infamously traded Luka Doncic on draft day for Trey Young. Now, people tried to argue for a couple of years that, oh, both teams are happy with this deal, you know, it was a win-win. I think that argument's running out of gas. Yeah, I mean, sh we were some of those people, like, right when it happened, I was super high on Trey coming out the draft, but it took about a year or two to realize, yeah, Luca and Trey, Luca is just different. Hey, though, despite the Hawks being terrible, Trey was an instant star. He averaged 19 points, 8 assists his first year. Got that up to 29 points and 9 assists per game his second year. Weirdly enough, he got barely any votes for most improved player. Yeah, I didn't really get that. Maybe Brandon Ingram on that new team was just balling out, so that got it to him. I, I don't know why he didn't get more hype, because that number jump is ridiculous. Maybe everyone just felt bad that LeBron traded Brandon Ingram I think away. so. <laughs> I think that's what it was. For the last seven, so it's been a nice run for him offensively. But by the third year, I mean, they were having legit success. They added Clint Capel at the 2020 trade deadline. Great fit next to Trey, throwing those lobs. You had John Collins, DeAndre Hunter. But after starting the next season, 14 and 20, they fired Lloyd Pierce and they promoted Nate McMillan and went 27 11 the rest of the way. Nate McMillan, a guy we're familiar with, we saw him growing up with the Blazers coaching them. I know he still had it. He took over the Hawks and did a pretty damn good job. Yeah, they made the playoffs as the fifth seed and they bounced your Knicks in the first round. <laughs> they did. It wasn't really close. What well, was like a five game series. Trey just owned the Knicks that entire series. And he made damn sure he will be booed in that city for the rest of his days. He will. Trey Young looks like my dad's dick. I, didn't, I never saw my dad's dick. What a save. In the second round, they played the Philadelphia 76ers. Not a series many thought they were going to win and they probably shouldn't have, but how many times have we brought it up? Ben Simmons just refused to shoot and they won the series. Simple as that. Yeah, this was one of those cases more about the 76ers lost this series more than the Hawks actually won this series. And my God, nothing is funnier than watching the Sixers get booed off their home court in game seven. Yeah, I remember Ben Simmons actually kind of shut down Trey in that game seven, but he just could not do anything on offense. And then the whole post game interviews from Doc and everything, that sh was so funny. They eventually fell in the conference finals, the eventual champion Milwaukee Bucks. But hey, I mean, they pushed them to six games and you know what? They very well could have won this series if DeAndre Hunter hadn't gotten hurt. Giannis got hurt for games five and game six. So they had DeAndre Hunter to play defense on Chris Middleton in game six. You know what? Maybe they could push it to a seventh game and maybe they're off to the NBA finals. Probably not, but maybe. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they won game one, things were looking bright. And even after getting bounced, you lose to the Bucks, the eventual champions. As a Hawks fan, I'm feeling good. The future is looking bright. Future was looking bright, but the next season, oh boy, they stumbled big time out of the gate. They were 17 and 25 after 42 games. They had the second best offense of the league, but they had a bottom five defense. Like the previous year though, they rallied a little bit, got a 43 and 39 record that put them as the ninth seed, meaning they had to win two games just to make it into the playoffs, which they would do. They beat the Hornets and then they beat the Cavs, but they were pretty easily dispatched by the Heat in the playoffs. Yeah, they only won game three thanks to a game winner from Trey Young, but Trey overall this series was embarrassing! 32% shooting, 18% from three. Come on, Trey. Ridiculous. 2022, they decided, you know what? A year of stagnation. It's time to make the big move. Let's throw all the chips in. And they went out for DeJounte Murray. You were a big fan of this move at the I time. I loved this move at I the think time. The consensus thought it was a pretty good move. Sure, you're giving up three future first round picks, which always hesitant to do, especially when you're getting back a player of DeJounte Murray's caliber, not like a superstar level player. Player, but it seemed like a great 
fit. You had a guy who could play a little bit off ball, but mainly for his defense next to Trey was the big idea behind this trade. Yeah, I'm always a little hesitant about just throwing away first round picks because of the classic Brooklyn Nets trade from back in the day where they basically traded away Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown for old Paul Pierce and old Kevin Garnett. Bad day at the office. But I was with you. I was like, you know what? Of all like the guards who are available in the NBA, I think DeJounte Murray is a great fit next to Trey Young. Yeah, he was a young up and coming player. Like I said, he could actually play defense. You needed that because Trey's one of the worst defenders in the league. You need a really good defender next to him. Even with Murray, though, the Hawks, they were about as average as you could possibly be. They went 41 and 41, despite firing Nate McMillan midseason and replacing with Quinn Snyder. This is one of my favorite fun facts ever in NBA history. They went over two months where they never had a winning or losing streak longer than two games, and they finally broke that trend with a three game winning streak. You know, at least as your Atlanta fan, you never get too high or too low. You're just kind of riding the wave, you know? Could they're, be worse. They're a model of consistency. Yeah, you got to give them that. And then they finished. Finish as the A seed, going to the play-in, and I don't know if you remember this, but right before the play-in, everything was kind of overshadowed because there was like these Trey Young trade talks, which why are stories leaking about Trey Young trade talks right before the playoffs are supposed to start? I agree 100%. Why are these leaking now? Even then though, as the A seed, they play in the play-in against the Heat. They went into Miami and just completely gave the Heat the word. Shocked the world. Yeah, shocked everyone. Everyone thought, oh, the Heat are going to easily win this, but no, the Hawks came up big and you know the Bucks are pissed off at them in hindsight. Bucks were furious. <laughs> that means they got the seventh seed though and like we said they matched up with the Celtics. They fell behind 3-1 before again they pulled off just another shocker in game five thanks to 38 points and a game winning three from Trey Young. But back at home for game six the Hawks they were they were in it late but ultimately Tatum and the Celtics were just a little too much. Trey had 30 points but on 9 and 28 shooting. The Hawks are going home for a second straight year and look taking the Celtics to six games for a team that was the eighth seed. That's fine. But like you said, their whole playoff run was overshadowed by those Trey trade rumors. Yeah, and sure, they were only two years removed from that Eastern Conference Finals run, but it really didn't feel like it because there was so much turmoil with the roster and the organization at the moment. You had a new coach, Quinn Snyder, who took over during the season. Trey Young, your star players in trade talks. There was already kind of like a little bit regret around the DeJounte Murray deal. Like, was this the right player to go for? So everything was looking great and bright two years ago, but it only takes two seasons and you're kind of back to just mediocrity and wondering what to do for the future. Don't forget, John Collins wanted out too. That's true. The whole John Collins and trade talks every single year. Yeah, there was a lot of issues. So that brings us to this year. The Hawks, they dumped John Collins on Utah for Rudy Gay in a second round pick. They re-signed DeJounte Murray to a four-year $120 million contract, but again, this team has just been bipolar this season. They started the season 0-2 with losses to the Hornets and the Knicks, and they whipped off a four game winning streak that had blowout wins over the Bucks, over the Wolves, over the Pelicans. I mean, they're so up and down. Like they'll have wins over the Thunder, the Sixers before Embiid got hurt, at Miami, against the Lakers, against the Suns, and then they come out and do what they just did, lose by 10 at home to the Bulls. I mean, when you have Trey Young on offense, you got DeJounte Murray, you got Jalen Johnson, like they have so much offensive firepower, but the problem is they can't stop anyone. So they're just so damn inconsistent. Also, they just got ran out of the gym by the Hornets. I don't care if half your rosters out. That's insane. <laughs> yeah, their offense is still, it's still in the top 10, but their defense is still in the bottom five. In fact, they're dead last in opponents points per game and they're 29th in defensive rating. Yeah, it's that thing with Trey, like he's one of the best offensive players in the league. Pick and roll amazing. But he, he can facilitate, he can shoot, but he's also probably the worst defensive player, at least starting defensive player in the league. What do you do with him there? I mean, he's so bad on defense. He drags down an entire roster. He does. He's worse than Dave and we watched Dave for years and he was sh Yep. Like you said, Jalen Johnson has been like the one bright spot. He's averaging over 15 points per game. He's playing solid defense. He can get rebounds. He's shooting the ball pretty well from the field, but I think it's fair to say the Hawks have been one of the more disappointing teams in the NBA this year. You could say Warriors or Lakers, but they're actually playing a little bit better recently. So if I had to pick one team and not picking on like the Pistons, because everyone knew they were going to be shit, I would say, yeah, the Hawks are probably that team. Yeah. The pairing of Murray and Trey just hasn't worked up to this point. And you know, that Easter Conference final run you know it was a great run for what it was but it's three years old at this point and every year that goes by you know you're just you're getting a little further away from it so at the end of the day should the Hawks blow this team up well the reason why they should is because
because this team obviously isn't going anywhere. You know, they're six games under 500 at the time of this recording. Young and Murray have not been a good fit. And if you trade one of them and keep the other, like you're not getting a star back. Say if you trade DeJounte Murray to the Lakers, you know, you're probably getting back D'Lo or Austin Reeves and maybe a first round pick. Those guys don't fit with Trey at all. You'll be 31st in the league in defense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, the problem with trading DeJounte Murray is like, they're not getting back what they sent out for him. They're not getting back three first round picks. You can get one for sure, maybe two if they're not super valuable. So it's like you're cutting yourself at a loss. And then they could do a little bit better in this Lakers deal. Maybe another team will want him. You could get a defensive three and D type guy and then maybe some assets. So they can do a little bit better, but I don't know. I mean, same thing kind of goes for Trey though. Like what are you getting back for Trey at this point? Like I don't think there's many teams that really want him or he fits with his salary, how much he demands the ball. You don't have huge assets they're going to get you back a ton of picks. And like I said, I know the Hawks are holding on to that 2021 Eastern Conference Finals run, but again, that was a long time ago and take it from some Blazers fans, the worst thing an organization can do is cling onto a roster who drastically overachieved and made a deep playoff run. And not to diminish the run, but let's take a look at it. The Knicks themselves were huge overachievers. The Sixers basically had a meltdown and they couldn't even beat the Bucks when Giannis was injured. It was a nice Cinderella run, kind of some of the Blazers. Like it made you feel like you were closer to a championship than you really were. Also, it's been said time and time again, but there's only been two small guards that have been the best player on a championship team, and that's Steph Curry and Isaiah Thomas. And Trey's a nice player. I don't want anyone to get the idea that we think he's a bum or anything. He's not. He's a good player, but he's not those two guys. Yeah, I think Trey could be a number two, you know, if he's throwing lobs to Wemby in a couple years when he's older or something like that. But as the best guy on a championship team, that's so tough to do. As a point guard, it's nearly impossible. So he, he just isn't that guy, unfortunately. Well, let's play devil's advocate for just a second because I think there are some reasons why they also shouldn't blow it up. And the main reason is, look, it's lonely at the bottom of the NBA standings. I mean, ask the Pistons how fun it is to get stuck at the bottom of the NBA standings and stay there for years. Like, not every team is going to pull an Oklahoma City and rebuild as quick as they did. Yeah, it's really hard for it to happen. Atlanta, in terms of basketball, hasn't always been the most, like, support any team, even if they're crap type city. So, but at the same time, do you want to get stuck like the Chicago Bulls. It's really tough because you can get stuck at the bottom or you can get stuck in mediocrity. Also, if you trade both Trey and DeJounte Murray, like you're not getting a ton of value for either of them. Now you'll get some stuff back. You might get a prospect. You'll definitely get a few first round picks, but in total for both of them, I don't think you're going to get what the Jazz got for just Donovan Mitchell or just Rudy Gobert. Oh yeah, no shot. Like the thing is with Trey, like I was saying earlier, how many teams would really want Trey? Like I think just a handful like the Knicks aren't going to want him. They got Brunson now. I can't really think of another major team that would go after him. Maybe the Heat or something. I don't know, but it's going to be hard finding fits for these guys, to be honest. I mean, if they could, the Lakers would take a flyer well, on 100%. Him. They're the Lakers. They're going to be rumored if it happens. And hey, look, it may be a long shot, but maybe Trey's future star teammate is already on the team. We mentioned him earlier. Jalen Johnson, 15 points per game, over 50% shooting, around 36% shooting from three. He's playing solid defense and he's only 22 years old. So if you trade DeJounte Murray for some defensive depth, I'm not sure that deal exists right now, but look, it's a hypothetical. Maybe you improve the defense of the team and maybe Johnson could take another step as a player. I don't think it's particularly likely, but it's definitely possible. Yeah, they could do like a little soft rebuild where they keep Trey, Jalen Johnson, Oneko Kongwu, kind of just build around those guys. They'll have a good pick this year at least. So that's always an option. But I mean, in conclusion, to be honest, I think you just have to blow it. Up. I agree. It hurts <laughs> to do. I mean, we're witnessing it right now. I was Blazer fans, but you got to rip off the band-aid. Like I just said, you don't want to become the Chicago Bulls where you're stuck as the 10th seed every year. I will say, I think it's better to rip the band-aid off too early yeah. than it is too late. Exactly. Like you can make an argument that the Thunder ripped off the band-aid a little too early with Russ and PG. Maybe. Like they just signed PG to a four-year contract. Yeah, they got bounced in the first round for a second straight year, but they could have ran it back one more year and seen if they can make it work. They said, nope, we're not good enough. We're not going to be good enough. They ripped that band-aid off. They traded both of them. And a couple years later, look where they are now. Yeah, same thing with the Jazz. Not as far ahead in their rebuild, but they got some good young players. They got a ton of picks. Just start early. Don't end up like the Blazers. Don't end up like the Bulls. We've seen it before. That's the video, guys. What do you think the Hawks should do this offseason? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.